know, we, put, we go back on straight back on the route. Yeah, it kind of feels from the outside looking in, maybe the stars have aligned. This is the perfect moment for this fight to happen. Is that how you sort of see it as well? Yeah, I would say so. I would say the stars have aligned for this fight. It makes no difference to me. I've got options. You know, the world titles are all tied up at a minute and, you know, everyone top five, top three, top two is waiting. I'll have this fight, uh, win this one and then, you know, straight back for the world title shot. At the end, the, end, uh, the world title is the goal. You know, this is just for me, uh, you know, a legacy moment. And that world title at welterweight as well? Yeah, 100% of world, uh, worldweight. Uh, less than two hours ago, it was officially announced that October the 8th on the Zone pay-per-view in the UK and Ireland, it'll be regular the regular Zone of uh, the Zone here in the States. Uh, you're going to have Chris Eubank Jr. It's the, the billing is Chris Eubank Jr. versus Conor Ben, October the 8th. It's going to be at a catch weight of 156 pounds. That right there kind of pisses me off and frustrates me. Because when has Chris Eubank Jr. ever weighed in? In fact, let me go look it up. I have it right here, the box wreck. What's going on, guys? How have you been? I haven't seen you guys uh, uh, last week. Um, basically, as you know, boxing been kind of slow. But the next several weeks, it's going to be pretty busy. So I'm going to be here on Tuesday, Thursdays, Fridays, and uh, Saturdays. And also, I finally recorded some podcast episodes. So I'm going to be releasing four this weekend. Four episodes this weekend of the Fight View 360 official. Here, you want to see? Before we go uh, talk about this fight a little bit, I guess that's a good way to start off the uh, video. But um, I'm also going to be here streaming during the main event of Tiafimo Lopez and Pedro Campa. It is fight week for that with Xander's eyes. So look, we're ready. We're getting there. All right, guys, how do you like my intro here? Listen to my intro to my podcast. This is just the first one. I'm sure it's going to be. I'm, I'm not going to see. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be updated over time. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think. Welcome and thank you for listening in to the Fight View 360 podcast. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Here it is. Is this one? Boom. Welcome and thank you for listening in to the Fight View 360 podcast hosted by myself, T Street Controversy. The goal is simple. We're going to cover boxing. Everything you need here in one place, and I'm not going to be long-winded. We're going to cut straight through the fat. News, rumors, rankings, and the most dreaded of all boxing politics and pay-per-views. But you must be warned, this show is for mature audiences, and I do cuss a lot, and there will be some rants on some of these episodes. Just know that we're not always going to agree. So, thanks for listening in. Enjoy the show. Well, I don't know. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a uh, perfectionist, so I'm not really happy with that. Um, but you got to keep it a certain length. Uh, we're going to have sponsors and all of that shit. But anyway, yeah, moving on. Let's go uh, check out uh, Chris Eubank Jr., though. So once again, it's going to be taking place on October the 8th in the uh, O2. Eubank Jr., 32 and 2 with 23 KOs, 32 years old. He's got one of those um, uh, Turkish hairlines. And I think he got a Turkish beard, too. I think he got the whole shindig like Floyd did. But Floyd took Floyd joint. It took a little while to take, but his his hair job, I'm envious. You know, his hair job looks nice. You know, remember when uh, Jake Paul took his hat? It was a little fucked up. The textures wasn't right. It just was like like a whole bunch of nut hairs like sticking up on his head. But now like Floyd joint look, look cool. You know, but anyway, we're looking at Chris Eubank Jr. who has fought as high as high as 168 pounds. He actually had a run at 168 in the World Boxing Super Series. But he is a natural 160 pounder, I guess you can say. But here's the thing. He's never weighed in below 100 and what? 60 pounds? He never weighed in below one okay, you got back in 2014, 158 and, and a quarter. It's eight years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Nearly eight years ago. It'll be nearly eight years by the time they step into the ring. And this is supposed to be at 156. I mean, listen, I like to fight. But that one six that 156 catch weight, that's you know, that that's that's fucking with me. You see what I'm saying? 
So we don't know anything about the undercard. It's going to be the zone pay-per-view for you guys over in the UK. And how much are the pay-per-views now? I got my Joshua show notes here. So basically, you guys will be paying. If you have the zone, it'll only cost you 10 pounds. I'm guessing. And if you don't have the zone, it'll cost you 18 pounds? In the UK? But it's going to be pay-per-view, so you would think that I don't know. But, you know, I just I just don't like it. I just don't like it at 156. Uh, 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 you been, began his career at 154? Where you see 154 at? I don't see 154 around here. We're on his box rack. He weighed in at his first fight in 2011 at 166 pounds. And I started covering him somewhere around, I'm going to say probably like 2014 is when I started covering him. You know, when he used to do all that bullshitting around in the ring. But Connor Ben, 21 and no, with 14 KOs, 25 years old. He's a 147 pounder. So I'm guessing it's like, all right, it goes both ways. And Conor Ben started his um, career. Conor Ben even fought at 140. He weighed in, no correction. The lowest he's weighed, he fought somebody who was 138. The lowest he's weighed in at is looking like 144. And he's never, the most he's weighed in at, according to BoxRec, is 148 and a half. So, all right, gives, you know, it's just that, you know, I, I have more concern in situations like this. Oh, my, it's freaking out. I have more concerns for the fighter who has to drop more weight where, you know, they're not used to dropping weight. But nonetheless, I like to fight. You know, who am I going to pick to win against Chris Eubank Jr. and Conor Ben? I'm still not really sold on Conor Ben. He's been looking good, though. But looking good against, you know, Chris Van Herden? Nah, bro, that don't, that don't, that don't wet my beak. That don't do it for me. Chris Algieri, Mr. Old Tippity Tap, Tippity Tapping around the ring. Chris Algieri was real long in the tooth. That don't really move the needle. Adrian Granados was really supposed to be the one that kind of moved the needle, I guess. But he looked like shit. He fought a very, very shitty fight. I was upset with him. Adrian Granados. Samuel Vargas got him out of there, but Samuel Vargas was a, a, a journeyman. Sebastian Formella, you know, he looked better than Sean Porter did against Sebastian Formella. But basically, do these fights really like make you think like, yo, you know, like Conor Ben is going to be the motherfucking truth. I watch too much boxing. That shit is all smoke and mirrors to me. You see what I'm saying? But looking at Chris Eubank Jr. being the bigger fighter, arguably the better puncher. Put it this way. If Conor Ben was to win... It would likely be by trying to outbox Chris Eubank Jr. You know, not really engage. Will there be some type of rehydration clause on the night? Because my gut and because of the size and the experience, overall experience, Eubank Jr., I'm going to go with him for the win. I'm going to go with him for the win. Just look at the resume. Liam Williams, solid, solid, solid win, solid win. Not great, but let's go look at it. Matt Vade Korobov, I was really disappointed in that. Matt Vade Korobov had one of the worst years or two-year stretches in probably as long as I've been covering boxing. Poor dude, poor dude. Like, I was really looking forward to that fight. James DeGale, he put his ass in the dirt. His career, like, he ain't been back since. George Groves, now that was a very spirited somewhat performance, but then again, George Groves had one arm, you know? So that right there, you know, Avner Yildirim, huh. excuse me, I hate fucking Avner Yildirim. Arthur Abraham, that was a nice, solid twilight ending for, for, uh, for um, Arthur Abraham. Damn, the Nick Blackwell, he damn near killed him. Glad he's okay. You know, when he tried to come back, like, bro, he was tripping. Gary Spike O'Sullivan. It was Lindy Laura just fought him. But what I'm saying is the experience, you dig? The experience. 
Dimitri Chudnov, Billy Joe. This was a big fight. Domestic level, Billy Joe went on to win a world title. So the gut is saying Conor Ben. It's going to be on October the 8th on The Zone pay-per-view. The Zone here in the States in the O2 Arena. Um, they haven't announced anybody who's going to be on the undercard yet. We're probably going to get some fucking Campbell Hatton. I'm guarantee you it's going to be some Campbell Hatton on that joint. Maybe some Campbell Hatton and Hopi Price. Let me see. Campbell Hatton, Campbell Hatton, Opie Price. He probably going to bring over Eddie Hearn, one of his American fighters from the Matchroom USA. It's going to be a woman's fight. I can already see this card already. But yeah, I'm going to be going with Chris Eubank Jr. By decision. But I wouldn't be surprised if he stops. But either way, I'm just glad it's happening. It's one of those fights that if the UK could have made it, you know, and, and you know, if it was available for them to make, then they had to make it. You see what I'm saying? 